the demon world's king has been impeached and rendered jobless, while the heroic hero was captured following a failed expedition. However, fate brings them together on an unpredictable journey into the unknown, facing numerous dangers and twists. The story continues several days after the meeting with the Redbud Knights. Alice was secretly training near a waterfall. She freezes the waterfall with her ice magic. And when she is almost happy that she has done it, the water pressure destroys her ice. Looking tired, she murmurs that she is still a bit away from the Saint Rank. But she abruptly hears a voice say it's not a little, but the distance between the sky and earth. When she glances around, she sees Merlin laughing at her. She asked how he knew she was here, and Merlin said that Alice had been leaving early and arriving late for the past few days, so he followed her out of curiosity. She tells Merlin that she has to train to reach the saint rank soon, but Merlin asks if trying to break through like that is effective over time. Merlin then tells her she is wasting her time, but she replies that is how she has been training. He tells her that she asked him how he got so strong, and he tells her that being in a near-death situation will make it easier for her to unleash her potential. Alice then recalls and believes what Merlin said because her mana and aura were refined after she was battered nearly to death by the Goblin Emperor. But she refutes this, though, as she is not a moron who would randomly seek out death. After that, Merlin offers to train with her, but she asks if he wants revenge. But Merlin asks why he will do that, and he wants to train her so she can do more to pay off debt as her level rises. She objects, though, stating that she would be in danger if Merlin had malicious intentions. However, Merlin tells her she is troublesome and picks up a twig. He says he will use a twig in the fight. Then he tells her to attack him and makes fun of her by reminding her of when he stripped her of her armor. Then, in a rage, Alice attacks Merlin with ice magic, but Merlin's anti-magic dispels it. She immediately sprints toward Merlin and attacks him, but Merlin easily dodges all her attacks because she is moving too slowly for him. Alice is furious and sprints full speed toward Merlin, but Merlin accidentally knocks her to the ground. After some time, Alice becomes upset with Merlin for striking her. Merlin later regrets his hands slipping during practice and even makes lunch for her. After taking the first taste, Alice is astonished by how tasty it is. She is further discouraged, however, when she realizes that Merlin is also a better cook than she is. After finishing dinner, she announces to Merlin that going forward, he will be in charge of cooking, and she will take care of the housework. The next day at the Adventurer's Guild, Merlin curses Hobbes for his inaccurate comments about the race. Hobbes tells him to calm down, as it's normal to lose one or two times in races. But he is shocked when he hears Merlin has never won, even after betting a hundred times. Still, he motivates Merlin to try a few more times. However, Merlin has no money, as Alice has hidden it well. So he takes out the key and realizes treasure hunting is more reliable. Suddenly, Merlin feels someone's gaze on him. The person is called Sona, who has gone to look for Alice but notices the key in Merlin's possession. She knows that Merlin is Alice's husband and that she can't feel any magic from him. So she smiles and murmurs she will take the key back from a mere villager. Later, Hobbes then offers to take Merlin to Helena's secret cottage, a place any man would understand. Intrigued, Merlin agrees to go with Hobbes. Merlin reaches the secret cottage with Hobbes and another man from the guild. When Merlin looks at Helena, he thinks Alice should see what a real woman looks like. Hobbes then introduces Merlin to Helena, and as soon as Helena sees Merlin, she is shocked. She then takes the three men to the VIP room, where Hobbes and the other man enjoy their time. After a while, Kalsona, dressed as a performer, arrives and shows her dance moves to impress Merlin and the other knights. But Merlin thinks something is wrong with this woman, so he insults Kalsona and tries to leave. But before Merlin can leave, Helena informs him that someone wants to meet with him. This shocks Hobbes and Merlin, who think this someone might be Alice. Helena then takes Merlin underground, so he thinks that, luckily, it isn't Alice, as he would get a good scolding if the Guardian of Justice were to know about this. After reaching the place, Helena quickly bows before Merlin and greets him. Merlin realizes that Helena is a demon and asks how she recognizes him. Helena explains that she is the servant and general of Asmodeus, the demon king of the fourth palace and the ruler of lust, who is a friend of Merlin. 
Merlin is shocked to learn that Asmodeus, a demon dressed as a woman to save his palace from economic depression, has become an idol. Merlin notices a magic mirror, so he sits before it and asks Asmodeus to show himself. Asmodeus appears and greets Merlin. Merlin tries to act smug in front of Asmodeus, but when he reveals how Merlin fell in love with him when they first met, Merlin tells him to stop. Asmodeus informs Merlin that the parliamentary elders are looking for him, as the title of the first demon king of the Palace of Pride is now vacant. Merlin asks if Asmodeus just wants to inform him about that. Asmodeus then tells him that his subordinates have found traces of Hell's envoys in Great Britain. Since Merlin previously had a feud with Hell, Asmodeus suggests he be careful. But Merlin tells him not to worry, as he will slay Satan, the Lord of Hell, if he comes after him. After the meeting, Merlin tells Helen not to call him Lucifer, as he is no longer the demon king. However, Helen misunderstands his intentions and thinks Merlin is on a secret mission for the demon race. Despite knowing that Helen misunderstands him, Merlin still tries to use her and says that, for the sake of the mission, he wants her to pay his debt for him. But as soon as Helen hears that the debt is more than 10 million gold coins, she quickly shuts the door on him and tells Merlin to go home and sleep. As Merlin goes home, Kalsona follows him and decides to kill him. She dashes toward Merlin and attacks him with her daggers, but Merlin senses the attack and uses his sword to knock her down. He realizes Kalsona is the same lady from the pub, so he tells her to stop hitting him and leaves. Kalsona is shocked and realizes Merlin has been hiding his strength, so she can't steal the key back. Soon, a black portal opens and asks Kalsona about the mission. Kalsona bows and tells the man their opponent is probably at the peak of Saint rank. This shocks the man, and he realizes that Merlin has defeated Bernard. Kalsona asks the man if he remembers the Frost Saint Dragon Isram. This Frost Dragon is one of the six Saint Dragons and was contracted with the former king as the guardian of the former realm. The Thousand Court Mages had sealed the dragon when the realm was destroyed and fell into a deep sleep. Kalsona says that she knows the language of dragons to awaken Isram. The man says their strength will be doubled and invisible if Isram abides by the contract with his father. The next day, Alice trains with Merlin to reach the saint rank quickly. But like before, she attacks Merlin with magic, and he easily knocks her down. While resting, Merlin suggests that she change her style, as being a magic swordsman is too much for her. But she refuses, as she has vowed to become the successor of the Great Snow Mountain. When training with her teacher, she asks Merlin if his weapon is why he is so strong. In the past, the bishop had told her that Merlin's demon sword was strong but that Merlin, as a person, was not. However, Merlin denies this and explains that the sword is the king's weapon, mainly used to prove one's identity. Those not acknowledged by the sword can't even pull it out. He then gives his sword to Alice and asks her to try pulling it out. Alice tries to pull the sword with all her strength but cannot do it. After resting for a while, Alice starts her training again. While fighting, Alice uses her new move on Merlin, but before he can react, he feels intense pain in his heart that he can't handle. He starts falling toward Alice, and she realizes something is wrong. She uses her full force to change the direction of the attack, but her sword still scratch Merlin. Finally, his heart stops hurting, but Alice scolds him for head-butting her. Merlin looks at his hand and is confused, as even though the church's holy water doesn't work on him, Alice's sword manages to cut him. He picks up the sword and notices it is strange as if it defies him. He returns the sword to Alice and asks her why she put a seal on it. But Alice has no clue about it, as she stole the sword from her teacher. She explains that she secretly ran out of the mountains, thinking she was ready for the outside world. Merlin then insults Alice for running from her teacher and ends the training for the night. A few days later, Alice took Merlin to meet her friend Da Vinci so she could tell them about the key. As Alice approached Da Vinci, she was grabbed from behind by a woman named Rossetti. Alice looked at her disgustedly. Alice couldn't handle her sweet words and coughed up blood from her mouth. Rossetti then looked at Merlin and asked Alice if he was her husband, whom everyone was talking about. Alice refused and said they were not married but just a normal couple, and asked him if she was better than Alice. But before Merlin could say anything, Alice jumped between them and told Rossetti to stay away from Merlin, as he was hers. 
Alice changed the topic before Merlin's and Rossetti's cold gazes. Alice thought that the only person she liked was Elgin's master swordsman, but the food that Merlin made was delicious. Without wasting any time, Merlin showed the key to da Vinci and asked her about it. After looking at the key, da Vinci told him that the key was a remnant from the previous realm. When she tried to examine it through her magic, she felt an ominous aura from it that terrified her. She told Merlin that the aura emitted by the key didn't belong to this world, and she asked him to give the key to her so she could study it thoroughly. Merlin refused at first, but after Alice's guarantee, he gave the key to her. So, that's it guys. Would da Vinci be able to keep the key safe? Also, what secrets do you think the key contains? Don't miss out on the chance to be the first to know the secrets that await. Hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications to be the first to find out what happens.